Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à Saigon. Aujourd'hui, nous découvrirons l'histoire et la cuisine française. <coughs> Ouh. Excuse me, uh, pardon my French. Uh, welcome to Saigon, guys, the current city I'm living in and a place I feel very passionate about. Today, we will be uh, exploring and discovering the French colonial past that is uh, still a part of Saigon today, and more importantly, the food that the French have left over and the Vietnamese have reinterpreted uh, in their own delicious way. So come along for this adventure and let's discover Saigon together. Walking around Saigon, it's very easy to see the French colonial past uh, pretty much everywhere you go, whether it's the architecture, um, the remnants of the language that you can still find on buildings all over the place, um, or the food, where they've uh, really adapted a lot of the things that came with French culture um, to uh, this really amazing food cuisine and uh, the most famous thing that you'll probably find regarding Vietnamese food, which is the banh mi. So guys, now it's time to eat. And regarding the food and regarding banh mi, as I just mentioned earlier, we're going to do a comparison of two of the best banh mi sandwiches that you can find in Saigon. Uh, I'm right now in the center of District 1. Uh, Saigon is broken up into various districts, but District 1 is uh, really the center of Saigon, the place where you can find the most uh, tourists, backpackers, but also uh, uh, kind of the bustling commercial center of the city. I used to actually live right down here around the corner. Just go this way. And uh, luckily, my stay was filled with a lot of delicious food. And I was, in a sense, caught in between this battle between the best bun mi's that you could find in the city. So we'll go check out the first one. We'll get my favorite one, which is made with meatballs. And then the second one, which is arguably the most famous and notable that will probably have a line in front of it. And we'll see how that's made. And then we'll do a little comparison and we'll really decide uh, which is going to be the best one, and when you come to Saigon, the ones that you have to try as well. Get the uh, meatball one. One. So I've ordered my banh mi and I'm standing outside of banh mi hong hoa, which is probably one of the most famous uh, banh mi's in Vietnam. They have very high ratings and uh, the best part about it is they actually make their own bread in-house, which is probably one of the reasons it's uh, so damn good. So uh, I'm gonna pick, uh, pick this up and now we will head over to the other banh mi sandwich place. I will then buy another banh mi and we will eat them together, side by side comparison and I'll give you exactly what I think of both of them. As I walk over to the next spot, I think it's um, an interesting thing to say is that uh, I don't often come to D1 during the day anymore and it's very funny seeing a lot of foreigners um, all in the same spot. Uh, this is the backpacker center so uh, you do see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of tourists and um, it's kind of funny because living in a more local place, you don't often uh, you don't often have the exposure to a bunch of other foreign people all at the same time, and you often feel that you're the only foreigner, um, you know, in the city. So it's kind of funny to come back and you know see other faces, and you're like, hey, I look like you guys. So um, very strange. Now I am coming up to Ban Mi Quin Hoa, very similar name, very different place, and you can see here, Ban Mi in hand that there are already, I don't know, about 12 people lined up. It only opened up about uh, 10 minutes ago and this is pretty standard um, any time of the day. So I'll get in line and I'll try and buy myself a sandwich. Do you speak English? A uh, little. A little? Where are you from? Japan. Japan. Why did you come to this shop? Uh, internet. Internet, best one, number oh, yes, one. Number one. Okay, that's fair. It's <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, guys. 
Okay, I have successfully gotten the second banh mi. It is in hand. That place is ridiculous for many reasons, but I don't. In the video, you could see that the lady there is like a machine because they churn out like I, I imagine thousands of banh mi every day, and it's easily the most famous one in the city. It's also one of the most expensive banh mi's you'll have, but um, you'll see when I open it up, there is a lot of meat, and uh, it's definitely famous for a reason. So. I actually went to this banh mi shop with my uh, friend Mahmoud when we were originally backpacking in 2016 and uh, we walked over here, Saigon felt so foreign and uh, yeah it was like easily the best banh mi I'd ever had so now I'm quite the connoisseur and I like what I like but uh, I'm very excited to show you guys so let me find a place to sit and um, we will unpack this sandwich. So now this is a park called I believe September 20. Eighth park, maybe 29. I don't know the day. Sorry, if you're Vietnamese, you can correct me. But um, this is uh, one of the most famous parks uh, in D1 and in the city center. Um, it's always full, no matter what time of day you come. They have an underground central market here, and um, you know, just like nice places for people to sit. Um, the best part is like people actually here. You can see they actually work out. Um, you always have, uh, I guess Vietnamese people like to keep pretty fit, so you can always see people kind of like, uh, you know, doing exercises, ladies doing aerobics. Um, it's definitely very cute. Okay, so now is the time to see both sandwiches, explain to you a little bit about banh mi, and then we're going to taste and definitely eat these, uh, because I have not eaten anything all day. So, what is a banh mi sandwich? Basically, when the French were here, um, along with lots of other things, both good and bad, they brought the French bread baguette baking culture. And so as the French left um, in the 1950s, um, one of the only things that stayed because the people wanted it to was certainly the baguettes. So the banh mi, literally meaning bread, both in Vietnamese and banh mi the sandwich, uh, means the same thing, depending on how you say it, I guess. I'm not a Vietnamese speaker. But what it is is you have a fresh baguette, stuffed with uh, various kinds of meat. Um, very important is to have a layer of butter at the bottom and uh, some pâté. Um, pâté also comes from the French. Uh, normally it's like a liver kind of paste. It kind of gives this earthy and richness to, uh, to the sandwich. They then top the very heavy ingredients with some really nice light uh, carrot slices, cilantro. I know a lot of people hate cilantro, but it's, it is really good and uh, most importantly some chili to give it some spice uh, to make it really Vietnamese. A little chili sauce, a little soy sauce, and you have an amazing banh mi. So let's look at the first banh mi here. We've got, sorry I have to do it on this park bench, but this is what we've got. So we have here, here you can see the meat. You have the cilantro, we have some pickled turnips, pickled carrots, and uh, the chili of course. So this is the first banh mi that I bought from the Bun mi hong hoa, which is one of my favorites. The meatball one is not the most common one. It's very hard to find in the U.S. Typically, it comes with the sliced meat, like what you'll see in a second. Um, but really, really, really tasty. Hello. Some kid's looking at my sandwich. No, not for you. Bye bye. I was interrupted by a small child um, while filming, so what I will tell you here is the meatballs have a really nice consistency and they add some sweetness, which is really important um, because the sandwich is quite heavy um, in the other version, so when you make it like nice and light with the meatballs, it, uh, it becomes very pleasurable to eat, which I really, really, really enjoy. The chili in this is very spicy and my mouth is on fire. Mm. Now I want to show you guys bun mi number two. So here is number one, nice bread, you can see. And here is the second one. We have the famous bun mi. You can see the layers of meat. You can see a lot more veg. You can see some pork floss here, which is very nice. And a really nice slather of butter. So this one is more like the fully loaded Cadillac version of banh mi, where the other one is your very typical what you would find on the street. Um, the other one was about 
45 cents more expensive. So I assume you're getting 45 cents, you know, more out of the bun me. So let's give this a try. I don't even know how to go about this. Um, I'm just gonna shove it in my face. Three, two, one. Mm. So good. The thing about bun me that I find like really impressive is the freshness of the bread. Every morning, these bakeries are, you know, like two in the morning, three in the morning, they're getting fresh bread in either from other purveyors or they're making it themselves. And the quality of the baguettes here is like, I mean, honestly better, not better, but like, you know, equal to what you would get in France. Really crispy on the outside, doughy and very light on the inside. Makes for a really amazing sandwich. So I'm not gonna lie, I uh, smacked both of them. Uh, I, you know, had two sandwiches and uh, made for two people. But I will tell you this, sometimes in life uh, you need to take moments to treat yourself and when you have two banh mi's in front of you, I think the best course of action would be to eat the banh mi's. So what do you often do when you smack two full sandwiches uh, sitting on a park bench in the middle of Saigon? Well the answer to that is our next stop which is going to be the Saigon cafe experience which is really reminiscent of our French day. So I will show you more at the cafe. And boom, now I am in a very typical coffee shop. It's not really a shop, we've just got some tables, we've got some boys, and I've ordered a very specific coffee here, which is the Vietnamese coffee that you can get back in the US, but here it's called Cafe Sua, which means uh, milk coffee. So essentially this is a blend of jet fuel-like black coffee uh, with a hell of a lot of sweetened condensed milk. All right, the, uh, the homie here, he has just dropped off the coffee. So here in Saigon, typically they, they mix it up for you, but uh, in Hanoi you always get the condensed milk at the bottom and then the coffee at the top and you get to mix it yourself, which is uh, also a fun thing. And then also note that you typically get uh, two drinks anytime you order coffee. This is uh, just an iced tea called Trada which is just like uh, your very typical, I think it's a black tea. Um, it's not sweet, it's just a little bit tea flavor and it's really nice and refreshing. <sighs> the coffee here is awesome. It's really, really strong and it's really, really sweet. So if you like strong, bitter flavors but you also enjoy sweet to accompany them, it's amazing. Um, for me, the coffee doesn't even really taste like coffee. It kind of tastes like dark chocolate, you know, where you get that really bitter front feeling and then you get the, the sweet from the back. One thing about coffee here, you definitely have to think of the French uh, originally bringing the coffee and cultivating in, what, in many ways the coffee from Africa, but also from Southeast Asia, like Indonesia. Um, the coffee culture here is really strong. They still say that they're tea drinkers, but um, I would argue that coffee, everyone's drinking coffee all the time. So if they're tea drinkers, they're definitely also coffee drinkers. There are more coffee shops in Saigon than you can count. And about every street you go on has at least two coffee shops. So uh, all the locals have their, their own spot they go to every morning. They wake up, they go get some coffee or they go to work. They finish lunch, they go get some coffee. Um, it's really part of the culture here. And it's something that I, as a new uh, proud person of Saigon, um, have definitely adapted. We've now arrived on the main walking street here in Ho Chi Minh City, um, formerly known as Saigon. I call it Saigon, um, it's easier to say than Ho Chi Minh, and uh, I can get into a little bit of the details on why I do that um, historically as well. But uh, I wanted to start off talking in a very particular spot, and someplace very important for the city. So, speaking of French colonial history, the French came here in 1858. They first came to what was called then um, Indochina, the southern part of China, um, in order to set up a colonial empire and to expand the French influence um, in different places around the world. Um, they started in Da Nang, which is in central Vietnam, and then as they slowly took over the area, including Laos, Cambodia, and of course Vietnam, um, Saigon was really the administrative capital. So, as you can see behind me, here is the beautiful French style administrative building um, now that they're using it as the basically city hall here in Ho Chi Minh um, you can see the red and gold flag from the Communist Party uh, perched atop 
and the very indicative French style um, of the building with the arches and with the, uh, with the statues. Well, I also wanted to start here talking about French colonialism is uh, you cannot talk about Vietnam without talking about this man behind me. And who is this? This is Ho Chi Minh, who the new city of Saigon is named after. Ho Chi Minh was born in 1890, it says right here on his plaque. And he was the communist leader who really founded the communist movement here and who, in a sense, was a true nationalist, who was someone who wanted to take the suppressed Vietnamese who had experienced centuries and centuries of political and cultural suppression under the French, under the Chinese, under the Khmer. And he wanted to take all of those influences, all of the background of the Vietnamese people and turn it into the state. So Ho was actually born here in, uh, not here, in the north. He spent time in France and he actually studied in the US and also in Soviet Russia. Um, and he came back with this passion to once again bring the Vietnamese, peop Vietnamese people the state that they've always dreamed of, the self-governing, the ability to have self-determination and liberty. Um, people can say what they want about the communism part, but he was really a true nationalist and he was the founder of the state and everyone endearingly calls him Uncle Ho. So here you can see Uncle Ho, here you can see the city hall building, and now you can see the walking street, um, a modern cityscape that I don't even think Uncle Ho could have imagined. So, as you can see behind me now, we have another French colonial relic. This is the Saigon Opera House. Um, apparently it was built in the late 1800s, and uh, it actually replaced the original place of what they're calling the Saigon Fortress, uh, which was uh, very clearly a fortress, but it was destroyed during the French colonial period. Uh, here you can see really classic French architecture. Got some statues, got some mosaics. Um, it feels to me very Napoleonic. If you want to look historically, um, Napoleon, when they actually came to Vietnam, Napoleon was the, the leader of France. And so as they were building their empire and expanding around the world, so too was Saigon coming out of a small village into the big city that it is now today. Uh, here, you can see the Hotel Continental Saigon, which is one of the oldest hotels in the city. And it also has that very classic East Asian colonial style which is beautiful. Here we have a nice boy playing a nice little flute. So I put on my ridiculous sun hat because it is uh, 98 degrees out here. And now we are at the Notre Dame du Saigon or the Notre Dame Cathedral of Saigon. Um, apparently it's been here since 1898 uh, was the year of completion, at least in its base form. So here you can see these added pillars. These are actually new uh, Vietnamese uh, improvements. The other, I guess the, the other form, as you can see where it's flat here, is very much like the Notre Dame that you would uh, find in Paris with the, the flat one. As I avoid getting hit by traffic, I will take you over to our next stop, which is literally right here which is the central post office that the French set up, which is probably the most impressive colonial building that they have here. And it's now one of the biggest, uh, I would say, tourist attractions. I'm not often by the tourist areas, and so it's very weird having people always try to sell me things everywhere I go. But uh, here you can see it. Here you can also see the very indicative arch structure, and then you have a nice face greeting you to look over to the church. Probably the funniest part about being here is that it's actually a functional post office. And then who do we have overlooking it all? Our boy, Uncle Ho. We have the tall boxes that people used to make international calls, I assume, back in the day. And then up here, 
we have a map of uh, right here you see uh, telegraph lines from South Vietnam and Cambodia. So as I'm coming out of the post office, I'd like to end this video on a pensive note. We have the post office, which was built to really connect the massive French Empire at the time, which literally had colonies in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in South America, and of course the people back home. You can kind of imagine the French colonials, you know, walking these streets nearly a hundred years ago and sending their post over here, off to France, hopefully that their wives, their husbands, their brothers will receive the, the news in a month or two months later. While the French were here, they also brought their religion. Uh, today, in modern Vietnam, nearly 50% of Vietnamese people are Catholic or uh, are non-identifying religiously, which for a Asian country is uh, quite striking. So, to really think about the scale, the impact, and the, the long lasting effects that the French had here. You know, we can look at the buildings, we can understand the culture, we can eat the food, but it's a beautiful time we live in now where we can experience all of this in a place and in a city that's growing and becoming so much more than what it once was. Thank you guys. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Um, we'll be bringing videos to you every Thursday and Sunday from places around Southeast Asia and in Vietnam. Cheers guys.